Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. Now make sure to stick to the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 16. So, now I, I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, First start with 4 to the power of x is equal to 16. Now, 4 here, this is the same thing as 2 squared. So now if I substitute in 2 squared for 4, I have 2 squared to the power of x is equal to 16. Now that we made 4 into a base of 2, I also want to change 16 into a base of 2 as well, because if both terms are the same base, then it's much easier to solve. So 2 to the power of what is equal to 16? Well, 2 times 2, this is 4. 4 times 2, this is 8. And 8 times 2, this is 16. So we have four 2s, meaning this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. So now I have... 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So in the case of 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, we can think of a as 2, m as 2, and n as x. So this would equal a, so 2 to the power of m times n. So 2 times x, which is the same thing as 2 to the power of 2x. So now I have 2 to the power of 2x is equal to 2 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, then this means that a, or sorry, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 2x is equal to 4. So now I have a simple equation. All I have to do to solve it is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out. Left with x is equal to 4 over 2. Well, 4 divided by 2 is simply equal to 2. So I'm left with x is equal to 2. So now to check, I had 4 to the power of x is equal to 16. Now we have x equals 2, so I have 4 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. 4 to the power of 2 is the same thing as 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So I have 16 is equal to 16. All right, so I have 5x to the power of 5 minus 5x is equal to 0. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 5. So if I factor out 5, I get 5 times well, 5x to the power of 5 divided by 5, that's simply x to the power of 5. And negative 5x divided by 5 is simply negative x. So now this is equal to 0. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So this way, we can just simply get rid of this 5, and it would be much easier to solve this equation. So now these 5s are both going to cancel out. And 0 divided by 5, that's simply 0. So now I'm left with x to the power of 5 minus x is equal to 0. Now from here, I can go ahead and factor out x. So if I factor out x from here, I get x times x to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. And now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to 0. And I also have x to the power of 4 minus 1 
is equal to zero. So x equals zero, this is already a solution right here. So we already have one solution to our original equation and we can find our other solutions from this equation. So x to the power of four minus one equals zero. Well, x to the power of four, well four here, this is the same thing as two, two times two. So if I replace two times two with four, I get x to the power of two times two minus one is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, we can write this as a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of two times two, it's gonna be x to the power of two to the power of two. And one, this is the same thing as one squared. So I have minus one squared is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is the same thing as a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is going to be x squared and b is going to be one. So now I have x squared plus one times x squared minus one is equal to zero. So now this gives me two equations. I have x squared plus one is equal to zero and I have x squared minus one is equal to zero. So x, let's first start with x squared minus one equals zero. I'm gonna first add one on both sides and these two cancel out and I'm left with x squared is equal to one. Now I'm gonna be taking the square root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, I'm left with x is equal to the square root of one, which is actually equal to positive or negative one. So these are two more solutions to a problem. Now for x squared plus one equals zero, I'm gonna subtract one on both sides. So now I have x squared is equal to negative one. Now if I take the square root on both sides, these two cancel out, I'm left with x is equal to, well the square root of negative one, this is actually equal to I. So now I have x is equal to I. So my solutions are x is equal to zero, one, negative one, and I. So these are my four solutions to this problem. So I have x to the power of three, is equal to x to the power of five. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract x to the power of three on both sides. So these two cancel out and I'm left with x to the power of five minus x to the power of three is equal to zero. So now I'm going to factor out x to the power of three. So now I have x to the power of three times x squared minus one is equal to zero. So now this is gonna give me two equations. I have x to the power of three is equal to zero and I have x squared minus one is equal to zero. So for x to the power of three equals zero, I'm gonna take the cube root on both sides. The cube root of x to the power of three is simply x and the cube root of zero is zero. So x equals zero is one solution. Now I have x squared minus one equals zero. So now I'm gonna add one on both sides. So now these two are gonna cancel out and I'll be left with x squared is equal to one. Now, if I take the square root on both sides, these two cancel out and I'm left with x is equal to positive or negative one. So these are two more solutions to our problem. So now, our three, three solutions to this problem are zero, one, and negative one. So now to check my original equation was x to the power of three is equal to x to the power of five. So let's first check zero. 
So if x equals 0, I have 0 to the power of 3 is equal to 0 to the power of 5. Now, 0 to the power of 3, this is the same thing as 0. And 0 to the power of 5 is the same thing as 0. So 0 works. Now let's try 1. I have x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. Now if x is equal to 1, I have 1 to the power of 3 is equal to 1 to the power of 5. 1 to the power of 3 is 1, and 1 to the power of 5 is 1. So this works as well. Now finally, we have negative 1. So I have negative 1 to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 5. Negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the power of 5 is negative 1. So this works as well. So these are my three solutions to this problem.